Yeah, hello, everyone. My name is uh, Paweł Wieczorek. Uh, I work at Samsung Car and D Institute Poland. Uh, currently, I'm involved in release engineering process for Tizen Common Linux distribution. Uh, the distribution is targeted at uh, supporting as many different uh, developer uh, boards as possible. And that's why um, about a year ago, we started a project, uh, an automated testing laboratory to check all those images that we publish on uh, boards we currently support. And that's, uh, that's what I would like to tell you about today. Uh, I will start with a short introduction to our testing laboratory. Then I will present to you uh, what drove us to creating such a solution. Next, uh, I will describe uh, what had to be done and how we did it. Uh, next, I will share with you uh, our future plans, our uh, to-do list, and I will summarize it. Uh, and if uh, time allows, there will be also Q&A session at the end. So to begin with, uh, this is how a single node of our uh, automated testing laboratory looks like. As you can see, there are multiple groups of uh, target devices and some supporting architecture. And I will be uh, completely honest with you. I wish uh, our testing notes of our testing laboratory looked this pretty uh, all the time. Unfortunately, this is how it looks like when it's fully hooked up, when it's fully operational. Uh, and let me tell you what do we have on board. As I said before, we've got uh, groups of devices, uh, multiple uh, of each group. And the first one uh, on your left is uh, a pair of Mino board toolbots. These are Intel-based architecture uh, single board computers that we use to test uh, Intel uh, 32 and 64 bit of uh, Tizen common builds. Next, we've got uh, two Odroids U3 Plus in the center for uh, testing on ARM v7. And uh, also, high keys for testing on ARM 64-bit. We've got also um, two regular uh, out-of-stock, uh, out-of-shelf USB hubs. And uh, they're pretty, uh, they come pretty handy. Uh, and uh, I will uh, describe why uh, in a minute. We've got also on the bottom and on the top uh, two rows of our custom designed uh, boards, which are micro SD card demultiplexers, which up close look more or, like, uh, more or less like this. And since I'm uh, completely honest with you today, these boards uh, are uh, already our second revision of uh, micro SD card demultiplexers. The first one was not uh, as successful uh, as uh, the one that you see here. Uh, so we switched to uh, the new one in all of the nodes of our testing laboratory. But first, let me tell you what drove us to creating such a solution. Uh, how does a new changes, uh, how are new changes uh, introduced in uh, Tizen Linux distribution? I believe most of you uh, are pretty familiar with the workflow of patches on Gerrit. And for most uh, of developers, uh, the work ends once the patch is merged to the Git repository. From the release engineer's uh, point of view, uh, the journey has just begun. Once the code is merged, Integrator has to create uh, a submit request, which is uh, really a simple Git tag uh, put to an object in Git repository. Then uh, the tag is read from uh, Garrett event stream and passed to Jenkins. Uh, then Jenkins orders a rebuild uh, corresponding uh, package in our open build service server. Uh, which rebuilds not only uh, the package, but also all of its dependencies, so that we know 
that no new uh, build breaks uh, are introduced. Once all of this is complete, a new image is created so that uh, it can be checked and accepted or rejected uh, in the next release of Tizen Common. This uh, um, workflow is mostly already uh, automatic, automatic, but there is still one point when uh, human interaction is necessary, and that's a release engineer's job. Release engineers uh, decide whether uh, new changes should be accepted or uh, declined inclusion in the new release. Uh, as you could see, the duo of uh, our primary tools, so uh, Open Build Service and uh, Jenkins, uh, are the ones that we interface the most. Unfortunately, these are uh, not really uh, um, supporting each other, so there had to be done some uh, activities uh, daily by all the release engineers. And what do we do? Uh, first of all, if any build failure occurs, release engineer is the uh, one that has to investigate the possible causes of such an event. Uh, also, we have to check whether uh, new images do not introduce any regressions uh, in the upcoming release. So we test uh, if uh, there were no uh, undocumented changes in API, or uh, if uh, there are no failures in connectivity or basic services. Uh, once all of this is complete, we may safely approve a new change to the main repository. Unfortunately, this uh, gives us uh, a lot of headache. This causes uh, some problems, mainly uh, because uh, all of these activities are uh, time consuming. Uh, we have to uh, download uh, all of the images for uh, our supported devices from main Tizen org server, uh, then flash the whole uh, farm of target devices and run all the tests. And uh, this task is not only time consuming, but also monotonous. It involves replaying over and over the same set of actions, but still uh, it requires uh, and precision and focus from the release engineers who perform those tasks. So we asked ourselves, uh, maybe the images that are created should not be uh, tested this frequently. Maybe only major releases uh, can be uh, tested so thoroughly. Or maybe just uh, simple tests would be sufficient. Uh, or maybe, uh, we could assume that uh, if there were no build breaks, no uh, regressions in, in the creation of RPM packages which uh, are used by Tizen distribution, maybe it, uh, it is enough indicator of the uh, successful upcoming release. Unfortunately, that would violate all of our basic principles that we try to uh, follow in the releases. First of all, we try to resolve all the issues as soon as they are discovered. They are much, much harder to find. Uh, um, once uh, uh, we uh, decide to check for them uh, rarely. Also, uh, we do not uh, tend to look just for a quick workaround. We try to always introduce a solution to the problem and the uh, most important principle is that we don't publish uh, images for developers if they were not uh, tested on an actual device. Uh, all those images that are published on Tizen.org are safely to be used, uh, are safe to be used on your target devices. That is why we decided that all of uh, these activities should be automated. And that's uh, what we've been working on. And all of these uh, tasks could be categorized uh, in uh, one of the uh, five um, major groups. First of all, we've got uh, the easiest uh, task to do. 
so the uh, software related, like pulling OBS for new images or simply getting them to the target devices. Then we had to uh, create infrastructure uh, for our build farm to run uh, all those images and tests on. Next, we also had to interface with some external infrastructure uh, outside our laboratory on main Tizen.org uh, servers, uh, like publishing test results so that they can be reused, reproduced, and uh, easily available to anyone interested. And finally, probably the hardest one, uh, was the hardware-related group. Uh, and it was uh, mainly uh, finding a unified way of flashing target devices with new images. But uh, let's start with the easy ones. Mm. The open build service uh, server, as I mentioned before, uh, is not really well suited to work with uh, uh, other parts of our infrastructure out of the box. Uh, it lacks uh, any event mechanism uh, in its default installation. Uh, those can be used by some uh, external uh, addition, uh, additions to OBS, uh, but require much, much configuration. Uh, also, uh, all the uh, naming conventions used by OBS are designed to be uh, easily readable by humans, by release engineers. So uh, there is a need for uh, parsing all those uh, human-readable uh, names. Uh, also, uh, all the new images are uh, scattered through uh, Tizen.org uh, servers uh, due to some um, remnants from the uh, categorization of uh, all those images. We decided that uh, we'll work with uh, the technology that we currently know best, and uh, all those scheduling tasks or uh, all the queuing tasks are uh, currently uh, done by Jenkins server. We also experimented with some uh, lighter alternatives, like Task Spooler or BuildBot, and uh, these experiments are still ongoing, but uh, this is uh, what we've been uh, working with for the, uh, for the major part of uh, last year. The second problem that we had to deal with was establishing reliable communication with all devices uh, in testing farm. The regular, the most common ones, like uh, OpenSSH, uh, mm, communication or serial console are great and they uh, serve uh, their purpose well, but uh, they do have uh, their drawbacks. OpenSSH mm, depends on uh, network services and uh, we try to uh, keep things as simple as possible. Uh, so uh, we would like to uh, detect uh, a failure in uh, any network connectivity before we even try to communicate with uh, an actual device. Serial console, on the other hand, uh, is a much less uh, flexible solution and it offers a lower rate of uh, data transfer. The default choice for communication with uh, target, our target devices uh, is uh, a tool which, uh, is, uh, uh, which is provided with uh, Tizen developers uh, package with uh, Tizen SDK. And it's smart, a smart development uh, bridge, which is used for most of the uh, devices uh, available in our testing laboratory. It combines uh, best of the both worlds. Uh, it uh, depends only on a, a single service. Uh, it, uh, it is still flexible, like the SSH connection, and it uh, provides us with decent uh, um, file transfer rates. Uh, we also uh, had to provide a way of uh, creation or maintaining uh, test servers. And uh, we started with providing just a, a simple 
uh, handbook for a newcomer to the testing laboratory. Uh, it was based on uh, Python uh, tool for documentation. It was based on Sphinx, but uh, it uh, soon was uh, clear that it is not enough. Uh, it, uh, the pace of the changes in uh, test lab was too high for maintaining a uh, separate uh, handbook with all the changes, with all the recipes on how to create testing laboratory. That's why we decided to maintain a, a Git repository with a, um, configuration uh, for our uh, hosts of, uh, to, uh, to our testing laboratory. We uh, decided to use uh, the probably most popular Python-based uh, configuration management uh, tool uh, currently available, and that's uh, Ansible. Uh, TestLab hosts contains uh, Ansible playbooks that uh, allow uh, to uh, quickly and easily set up whole infrastructure uh, necessary to create own private uh, testing laboratory. Uh, this is uh, why we, uh, mm, the main reason why we decided to do that uh, was to improve the deployments uh, of uh, new versions of our testing laboratory and to get rid of the servers that were uh, customly designed that only a single person knew uh, how they were configured. Uh, this is when we finally got rid of so-called snowflakes. As for interfacing with uh, external infrastructure and uh, the main use case was to share uh, and uh, publish our test results. We knew that uh, all the results that we get should be easily available to uh, everyone with the possibility for future reuse if someone uh, would like to reproduce them or, uh, or check uh, some historic event. Uh, we also didn't want to introduce a new service uh, and that is why we decided to uh, publish all the information that we gather on uh, Tizen Org uh, wiki pages. Fortunately enough, uh, Tizen Org wiki pages are based on MediaWiki, which is provided with a uh, really simple but still flexible tool for uh, automating, automated uh, editing and gathering information. And uh, all of this is done by a PyWikiBot. This way, uh, we can um, share uh, the whole uh, environment information with anyone interested. All the test results are published right away, and uh, they can be uh, used by uh, anyone who, is, uh, who would like to, uh, to, to check or re read them. The final problem that we had to face uh, was uh, uh, were the actually different ways of uh, getting uh, Tizen images onto the target devices. Most of them uh, required uh, completely different uh, procedures for uh, getting, the, uh, getting the images uh, onto them. Uh, they were, uh, all the procedures were uh, mm, designed uh, for, uh, for a single, mainly for a single device uh, per host, not for a whole build farm. Uh, so there were um, uh, common uh, conflicts uh, if there were too many uh, target devices connected to a single host. Also, most of the procedures were architecture specific. Uh, but we uh, found uh, uh, common denominator on all uh, the target devices that we currently support. All of them are bootable from uh, microSD cards, and that's what we uh, decided to use. That's when we came up with the design of uh, microSD card D multiplexer. These boards uh, provide shared access to the microSD card uh, between testing host and the device under test. Uh, two uh, parts are uh, intentionally 
made easily uh, swappable from the uh, board and are not on the board uh, from the start. These are uh, actual memories and uh, micro SD card uh, readers. Uh, those two parts are uh, the quickest to deteriorate, the quickest to wear off. That's why they should be uh, easily and quickly swappable. Uh, the boards uh, were kept as simple as possible, so the minimal set uh, of uh, connections uh, is provided on each of them. And uh, first of all, the board control. Secondly, but uh, not less importantly, a slot for memory card. Uh, also connections to the uh, control over the target device itself. and. Uh, the possibility to uh, get the uh, micro SD card connected to target device and the uh, corresponding slots on the host side and to uh, have the uh, authority to, to reset uh, the device we've got also a power switch which is a, a simple relay switch for cutting the power to the target device. All the boards uh, come with a simple tool which uh, allows us to uh, have the full control over the board from getting the information through uh, controlling the um, naming on, on the board uh, up to uh, providing all the uh, uh, all the capabilities of the boards itself. With uh, this solution, we could uh, finally close our former workflow, which uh, still involved human interaction, uh, uh, to the fully automated one, uh, with uh, the release engineer's uh, work replaced with this simple uh, uh, piece of uh, silicon uh, and since uh, the boards were, um, since the, board, uh, the boards saved us uh, a lot of work, we decided that uh, maybe they could uh, save a lot of your work as well. Uh, that's why we decided to uh, publish all the uh, schematics, uh, both for the boards and for the, all of the connectors that uh, allow to interface with target devices. And uh, all of the schematics and sources are available at uh, tizen.org uh, git repositories and were created uh, using only open source uh, tools so that they are easily available to anyone interested. Uh, as for uh, the our, uh, as for the to-do list that we uh, still have ongoing, uh, we uh, currently are uh, in the process of uh, creating pre-test cases so that we could detect uh, failing uh, images as soon as possible and do not waste time on uh, the changes that will probably, uh, that will probably not be included uh, in uh, future releases. Uh, we also have to uh, monitor uh, changes between uh, subsequent images in a more detailed way. Currently, uh, these are only uh, changes in uh, SH1 sums for, uh, from the Git repository. Uh, hopefully, uh, some uh, method of bisecting all the changes will be introduced soon as well. Uh, we will still, uh, we would like to be still uh, able to get the information, to get at least partial information uh, from the failed uh, test runs as well. Uh, and so we intend to uh, improve uh, our resource uh, management on the uh, whole build farm. Also by distributing the uh, whole setup so that it won't be bound to a single location uh, at uh, Samsung uh, R&D Poland. 
uh, and uh, I would like to uh, uh, share with you three uh, main uh, lessons that we uh, got from uh, creating the whole uh, automated testing laboratory. First of all, uh, modern automation um, does not uh, need uh, to, to reinvent the wheel. All the building blocks or the uh, tools that uh, serve uh, automating the, the work are already there. They just uh, require a little configuration from our side. Secondly, uh, although this task might, uh, for some people, uh, seem intimidating at first, uh, designing and producing custom hardware uh, simplifies uh, most of the tasks and uh, allows to uh, make uh, the whole process uh, automatic. And uh, finally, uh, automation, uh, even though it requires uh, some initial cost uh, pays off in, in a long term uh, like uh, any uh, process that, uh, it, uh, that is uh, given only uh, to the uh, server that works for us. If uh, there are some questions uh, from you, I will uh, happily uh, answer them. Uh, the question was uh, about the framework for the uh, tests. Uh, I, uh, I repeated your question, but if uh, someone would like, the microphone is uh, uh, in the center of the room. Uh, currently, we use uh, mm, three. Uh, the first one are the simple uh, shell scripts that, uh, are, that were used uh, formerly by release engineers. These are the ones uh, that uh, we, we are uh, familiar with and the, the test results that we are uh, able to quickly scan through. Uh, secondly, we wanted to unify the form uh, of the, uh, all the tests. So we uh, migrate most of our tests to Avocado framework, uh, formerly known as uh, Auto tests, if I recall correctly. Uh, there is also uh, a third one, uh, but uh, it's uh, connected mostly uh, to Tizen Linux distribution. Uh, it's TCT, which stands for Tizen Compliance Tests, uh, and it allows us to uh, check the uh, API for any regressions uh, or, uh, or if uh, all the functionalities are provided by the board itself. All right. Why, why so, wasn't it possible to do it um, without it? Uh, yeah. The question was about the reason for, for the uh, device itself. Uh, and uh, it's unification of the uh, whole process. Uh, with uh, those boards, we uh, do not have to uh, think whether it's Mino board or Android or HiKey. Uh, we've got a common interface to all of them. Uh, we, uh, as you said, we don't want to uh, have to uh, reflash micro SD cards and uh, um, put it back uh, to the uh, device. Uh, and 
from what I see is uh, that you are not uh, exactly satisfied with the answer. Or maybe I just misunderstood your question. So uh, about the bootloader issue, uh, we also tested. So uh, if, if there is a new change in bootloader, we uh, push those changes to target devices. That's why we uh, don't want to break them uh, if there is some, um, some crucial failure. Uh, not all of the devices that we currently support uh, do have some internal memory. Uh, high keys do, but uh, Odroids or Mino boards are not equipped with any internal memory. They uh, um, can be booted either from micro SD cards or uh, in the case of Mino boards from uh, the SATA port. But uh, it's, uh, it's the basic uh, storage device for the, uh, all of the uh, devices that we test on. Yeah, uh, not all of the uh, devices can be booted from, from other uh, storage devices. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Thanks. So, uh, I would like to ask, thank you for your presentation, I would like to ask, uh, did you consider to replace some of your bare metal uh, hardware boards by the emulators? QM, for example. Uh, all right, so uh, uh, whether it could be done with uh, only micro SD card uh, emulators on uh, virtualized in, in testing environment, right? Uh, not, not exactly. Yeah. Uh, the target hardware is... Uh, on the whole? Be, uh, complete hardware could be emulated. All right, so uh, the reason for it is that we would like to keep as close as possible uh, to the uh, actual environment of the developer. That's why we test on uh, the real micro SD cards. That's why we use uh, actual target, uh, actual SBCs as target devices. Uh, that's why we uh, do not only test on, on the KVMs, uh, not only on emulators, but also uh, on the uh, Android Mino boards and so on. Just a question because, uh, for example, we have a, we have a huge uh, amount of variants of our hardware and uh, we just didn't get all of them in our uh, test lab and, uh, and could not allow to flash it, flash it again and again and uh, get it broken because we di didn't have enough, enough uh, hardware so that's why we are considering to, to use emulators. In, Oh, well, in test environment. All right. Uh, so uh, currently our setup is based on, uh, on the actual hardware uh, and the, uh, the emulators were, were not taken into account so far. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so, so the question was about uh, locking resources and, uh, and managing all of them within testing laboratory. 
Uh, and uh, uh, as you said, uh, the initial way to do that was with additional plugin to the Jenkins server. If I recall correctly, that uh, it was called uh, external resource locker. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, it was uh, not maintained anymore, uh, but still it had some issues. That's why we moved to a simpler uh, method with uh, just log files uh, provided by basic utilities uh, on, on Linux. Thank you. Uh, all right, so uh, the question was uh, about uh, testing of input and outputs. Uh, all right, so uh, the TCT framework uh, checks uh, if uh, all the uh, connectivity uh, from the board uh, works properly. But uh, as far as I um, Remember, there are no uh, benchmarking, if that's what you mean, for the uh, data transfer and uh, reliability of the connection. All right, so, uh, so far uh, we not test on that uh, and uh, I think we probably uh, could and should put it uh, on our to-do list as well. Thanks. Exactly. So, and we also did like for our new processor, like a performance script to test all interfaces because we are doing PSP development and so on. And also lots of Jenkins scripts and, and everything, robot scripts. And this may also go like open source. So, is there already some uh, uh, repository to commit to? Because then this could get some momentum. Uh, yeah, about uh, publication of the rest of the uh, testing laboratory. Uh, it is available at the same uh, domain in the uh, Git uh, server uh, of Tizenorg as the uh, SDMAX boards. So tools slash test lab, all the other repositories. So handbook, uh, host with configuration management and major with uh, the whole setup is also available uh, and uh, developed uh, on public. If so, can someone also contribute? Absolutely. Uh, uh, sure, of course. Uh, all the uh, patches, all the uh, developers are mostly welcome. Uh, as for the uh, changes to uh, uh, micro SD card demultiplexer, uh, I'm not the designer of the board uh, itself. Uh, but uh, in, uh, in, uh, with any questions, uh, you can drop me a line or to my uh, mail address uh, or simply uh, write to the uh, Tizen mailing lists at uh, lists.tizen.org. Uh, the dev uh, mailing list is the uh, most popular one. The, uh, the questions will be answered uh, the quickest there. If there are no other questions, uh, thank you for your attention and see you around.